welcome to Torment Tides of Numenera on this beautiful Sunday. Is it really beautiful? I don't know. Beauty lies in the eye of the beholder, doesn't it? Uh, welcome, welcome. Without further ado and without any re kind of recap, guten Morgen, Roxy. Hallo! Ja, bei uns auch. Uh, aber auch das kann ja manchmal ganz schön sein, deswegen meinte ich auch, huh? Manchmal finde ich es echt ganz schön. Sometimes I really think it's nice just being at home, looking out of the window, the rain patting the window, and with a nice cup of coffee. Everything so, is warm in your own home, but outside it's so cold and wet, and yeah, I like that feeling. <sighs> Don't you? Like I said, without further ado and without any kind of recap, because last time it took me 20 minutes to tell you what happened in the last couple of episodes, I... Let's just play. Let's just play. And as always, as you know, you Shroxy do know that, and maybe some other people who watch too, um, you can choose what we do every time there is a choice. Not all the time, but most of the, of the time. I will tell you one thing that we did last time. We went into the underbelly. This is where we are now. This is kind of the industrial underground center of Sargus Cliffs, the city where we are. And we helped. Oh, first of all, congratulations to your, uh, to your holidays. This Urlaub Holidays? Also dieser kind of Urlaub? Moment, ihr geht nicht auf Vacation? Ihr seid... Ihr habt Holidays. I think... Oder ist Holiday einfach ein Feiertag? Da bin ich mir gerade nicht ganz so sicher. Auf jeden Fall! Aber ich weiß auch nicht, was es sonst wäre. Um, yes! You... You... Have Urlaub! <laughs> um, that's always nice. And, but it's... Yeah, bad when it only rains. But, uh, at least in our small little Wilhelmshaven, the last couple of days and weeks and almost months, I think. I should really get moving before someone tries to kill me. I agree. Um, the weather changed. Uh, the same day we had four kinds of weathers. We had hail, rain, beautiful sunshine, fog, everything. So, I think you will get some sunshine, even though that might not be the kind of sunshine that you wanted. Um, your first vaccination, that is... And that's very good. I'm gonna call me five minutes ago and then I can get my first... Uh, five minutes ago? And why does your mother know that? I'm, she got the letter? Or, or why? I... <laughs> oh, maybe you should delete that post, not that the police will find out. <laughs> ah, okay, uh, that's... I would say that might still be a little white lie. Adventure everywhere I look! Why aren't we chasing after it? Yes, yes, Eritus, yes, yes. Relax. But I would be nervous. <laughs> and under these circumstances as well, not that Mrs. Vaccination Lady or Mr. Vaccination Guy will tell you so. Miss Shiroxy, why are you here today? You are the contact person for your grandmother. Is that correct? And you have to sit there and say, Yes! I wish you good luck that you... Yes, you can! Oh! Oh, okay. Uh, that changes my perception of you a little, because I always thought that you... I should really get moving before someone tries to kill me. That you would be someone that gets red in the face, that someone who blushes uh, under pressure, but... Ooh, okay. Um, and you are against it and she didn't ask you, that is... Well, I wouldn't like that either. And I would... T 
tell my mother off for that. She, this is, she didn't have the right to do that. Then I would say. Okay, so good luck with your vaccination. And no, I don't find any kind of. I should really get moved. Do you have any? Can you say me. anything else, Das Kastov? No, you can't. So okay, this is. A crippled foreman and last time we spent half the stream to so he can make babies he's an automaton so a machine and he made some and we helped him with that but one of this of these babies was stillborn and we took it with us as an oddity we can sell it or for sentimental value we can hold on to it and I think we will do the latter because it was kind of heartbreaking. He could only g give life to his small little children here by dying. Because he had, have to, had to give them his own energy so they have energy. And uh, it was a little sad. Yeah, I. but if you're this kind of masterful liar, Shiroxi, you shouldn't be nervous. Should you? You just go there and say, hey, anyone looking for the con contact person for my grandmother? Here she is. Give me the shot. Vaccinate me. You can do that now. Hello, cute without E. Hallo, Schmoin. Schwoxi is getting her first vaccination today. But her mother kind of arranged it and Schwoxi was against it because her mother lied to them. To the vaccination government and told them that she is the um, contact person for her grandmother and it's all a little fishy and Shiroxi doesn't like that either but well she will get her first shot today <laughs> so was heißt Leben? let's oh, and, and for you cute without E um, no big recap because last time it took me 20 minutes to do that we are in the underbelly now this is the underbelly the underground industrial section of sagos cliffs we haven't looked down here last stream but here there is the artisan foreman the master artisan the master foreman and the crippled foreman so three big huge automatons that were designed someday by some other people to do something and are now here. <coughs> and all we pretty much did last stream, or half the stream, was help this crippled foreman to produce offspring. And he had to, we had to override his um, survival instinct a little bit to do that because he had to put so much energy into his little puppies that he died and this is one of them and one of them was stillborn the other ones went out into the world to explore <coughs> yes and this is what we did hello in heldrick new cup no no it's still the same still the same this is the cup was heißt leben and like i said was heißt leben I always thought the house camp welcome Heldrick was way overrated and a shitty system also the house is a shitty system to put small young children against each other yes it can build community with your own house but I mean if when you're in Slytherin you pretty much have all other houses against you and so it, it's and so you are against them of course so no I I was always against this house cup system, or not always, but I've come to dislike it. And 10,000 points for Griff <laughs> Griffin Puff. Um, that's a lot of points. So now, we are in the underbelly. We have talked to some people here. You say nothing but. Uh, okay. What do you say? You looking for work here? Hope you like heat, loud noise, and a pissy metal boss. This All is right. the one. Sin Smiths, report to the lower manufactory. 
Yes, the master, master, ma, ba, ba, ba. master foreman gives nothing but orders. Oh, it's you. The human that helped the under foreman abandon its post. Little loss, I'd say. Not much impact on the schedule, but try not to kill any more of us. Okay. Again, again, again. I think there's nothing new. I just click every option to see what he says. Uh, no. Okay. Gladly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. And the master artisan. He's nicer than the master foreman. <clears throat> ah, hello, the construct says. This is difficult to say, but thank you for helping under foreman. I would have done the same if I could. <clears throat> what can I do for you? Uh, who should I talk to about the history of the foreman? That was the master artisan. Uh, master foreman. Okay, farewell. I Q without E. I'm ready. I'm always ready. I have to admit, there some way I knew that already. I won't say how, but you can guess how. Um, but. Yes, that's... And to tell you the truth, Cutie Cat and I... It didn't come as a huge surprise. That's all I say to that. But yes, that sucks still. And... I mean, it. I don't think it will take that much more time. So, hold in there. Buddy. Uh, the old notes <laughs> and no not mean just friendly truth um this city's a moral sewer if you say so Edgar anything revel 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 some Revelations in there, Heldrick. Something you forgot? Scrap for the smiths. <laughs> yes, so we talked to all of these people now, uh, already. So now we will see what the eastern side of the underbelly holds for us. There's some poppers. What do you pop? You pop up? You ain't on this ground, are you? Ain't enough here for both of us. I don't eat often, but I don't beg neither. Hey, you heard? Someone died. More food for the rest of us, more pick. Found a bone with a ring round and rounded yesterday. Tangled in hair. Gonna sell it. Found a hand clock once that counted backwards when I breathed on it. Day's, day goes better if you hum a little song to yourself. Always does. Da, 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 da. <laughs> okay. Laid back. Work in the manufactory? I can be your apprentice. Oh, not too old. Still got teeth. Look! Got work that needs doing? Maybe your doors creak or you want someone dead? I'm, I'm not picky. You're creepy. I'm not a bad cook. You got a kitchen? Some knives? I'm good with knives. Well, oh, let me test food for you. Make sure it's not poison. I'll even chew it for you a little. <laughs> Look, I got a strong back. How about I carry your stuff? Won't steal nothing, promise. How about I do a portrait for you? I'd vote one of those ones. It ain't hard. I don't want charity. I just want an honest day's work. Okay. Well. Sure. He pretty much sold himself to us. Um, the best note from one of our players I just read was Dleck weiß was Parfüm ist. Dleck stinkt noch mehrere Tage. <laughs> yes, old campaign notes without any context. These are great. Especially Raphael's. Uh, he took notes for everything. I'm, I'm a little note lazy because I always thought to me 
Well, my adventurer, my character, doesn't take notes. He, not every time he talks to an NPC, he won't take out his notebook and write in it. So I thought, well, I don't do that either. But on the other hand, my character sees, smells, hears, breathes the world, touches it. So he, of course, he can remember some things much stronger than I can. So standing around is kind of nice. Shut up. Relax. So, um, it's not that unrealistic that he can use this help for his memories. Mm. I tried the point and click adventure from Sierra. Laura Bow! That's from Sierra? Can't speak quests yesterday and find out that. No. Oh. I know, I was Fran Bow, not Laura Bow. Wow, I don't know that. Ah, uh, sure, Oxy. Uh, uh, ah, a Colonel's Bequest is the game. Laura Are Bow is the here? designer. Let's I get it now. On, shall we? Uh, also with text parser. Shit. Um, what's that? Could you, could you without e? That's that means that you have to type your commands. It's not. With a mouse, not point and click. All right. At least, not all of it. But I guess if you have a text parser menu, nothing of it. But you have to type, walk left, take, cup, get thousand points for Gryffindor. That's what you do then. And yes, I don't take notes. It's, I was always lazy and that's why I didn't take notes. And then I thought to me, hey, that's even more realistic. So, Laziness came first to me as well. Q without E. <laughs> yes, that sounds like our campaign, Heldrick. I remember that very well. It was... Well, no, you, you're right. And there were several Bauern. Um, phew, Mechella, what do you have for us? In a stall filled with all manner of dusty parts, connectors and strange devices, a woman, <laughs> woman, a woman tinkers with a half ass, as, not a half assed half-assembled power source, peering at it through spectacles that have several adjustable lenses. Her long white hair is disheveled, and the skin of her thin frame is marked with small scars and burns. She looks up curiously as you approach. Welcome to Michaela's Mechanicals. I got a bunch of broken stuff and a few things that work. You want any of it? Let me know. Where do you get your stock? Trade mostly. Your friend Elegant there brings me things now and then. Hello, priest. Michaela. I get stuff from Little Manth too, though sometimes his stuff's too hard to touch. Even a few things from the sticker, if you can believe it. You trade with a sticker? Now and then? They dig up all kinds of things in those tunnels of theirs. Picky about what they trade for, though. Only one thing's that'll hold a lightning charge. Flashbacks, generators, that kind of thing. Which is weird now that I think of it, cause they're ex a charge. Like little battle batteries they are. I've even converted a few of them to power things. Oh, don't tell the sticker that. Be like using a baby for firewood in their eyes. Ooh, mean. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's standing right next to me. Okay. Um, do you know Mankina? <laughs> oh, why? I know that one. Carked and twitchy. Asked me to can the workings of some weird old device she had. Obsessed with it. Like it was a bit of sniff and she is slave to it. Never seen the like. You seem like the kind would be interested. So I'll tell you. It was a jagged, knobby thing, black and evil. Little warts all over. She seemed to think it could help her remember something, but I could, couldn't even figure if it was on or off. Near to killed me when I couldn't make it work for her. I've been, I'd have been mad, except I saw how, she, how sick she was 
withered, shaking, tears, the whole lot. Send her on her way and wish her luck. She'll need it, poor thing. <laughs> That's a note? Heldrick, Rumba, and Salazar Pinkeln. Weirdly enough, I don't remember that. I don't remember Salazar Pinkeln. Pinkeling. Hmm. I remember other stuff, but most of that is gross or rated R or really, yes, well, pen and paper. Um, what do you have for sale? We have much better stuff. Root spike. What does it, what does it do? This wooden stake has a crudely fashioned point and roots dangling from its head. When the proper command is given and the stake is thrown, it explodes on impact into a thick mass of tangled roots that entangle anyone slow or unlucky enough to be caught within. Its easy concealment, unassuming looks, and abilities to, to stop a pursuer dead in their tracks has made this item popular among rogues and never dwells. Hmm. Immobilized? It sounds sounds nice, but I just don't need that stuff. I mean, we don't want to fight, so I hope we won't need it that uh, that often. A furtive eye that on. That looks even freakier. Uh, stealth and perception. Okay. Anyone who wears the skin-tight suit and head covering, be head covering becomes invisible, or nearly so, to the naked eye, not the dark eye. It also resists many forms of scanning. A dwarf slides around the wearer's body in such a way that the things behind him can be seen. The effect is not flawless, often leaving a visible silhouette similar to heat haze, but in certain environments it can help him to hide in plain sight, especially if he remains motionless. Despite its advantages, the suit is not perfect. When the wearer moves, he creates a bubble or blur in the air that may be quite noticeable. Mm. Ooh! Ooh! A ranged weapon, finally! A sting charge. This pronged device generates and projects short-range powerful bursts of electrical power at targets. It has been cleverly modified to fit onto a human arm and rests comfortably on your hand. For energy damage. 15 plus, 3 per effort. Hmm. Maybe it's time that we try shoot <laughs> try shooting people. For energy, 3 physical. Range short, range medium. Ah, so that's the main difference. What does a buzzer do? Uh, Q without E, do you remember? Um, <laughs> the buzzer is what your character in our short Numenera adventure now has. This is how it looks. I think it was a buzzer, isn't it? Yes, the discs, yes. You have a buzzer. This is a buzzer. Nice, isn't it? And it wasn't very relevant to the story. I think maybe we did pee to melt snow. But I don't think it, that was the case. And even so, if that would be the case, I don't think, yes, that it would be very relevant to the story. Yes, you... When you were... So not not Maya, but Relis, when you were... When gravity for you was switched and you were on the ceiling of, well, the dungeon you're in now, you took aim with your buzzer and shot it at the people down there, at your enemies, at your opponents. And I think, I, I don't, I think it was a buzzer, your weapon in this case. Oh, and there's even a crossbow. Hmm. Seven? A heavy ranged weapon, okay. Hmm. This solidly built crossbow is capable of firing bolts at a tremendous velocity, rending armor and flesh alike. Yes. 
That's what seven damage does. This small mechanical device fits comfortably in a human hand. It fires thumbnail-sized razor-sharp discs. While these devices are sometimes made from scavenged Numenera, skilled artisans can craft them from raw parts. They're fairly common weapons, though still valued and dangerous. Berserker's Yoke. Bonded item. Plus one intimidation, plus three damage. Damage to us. Oh, no, damage to them. This is the negative effect. Minus one intellect edge. But you can um, compensate these negative effects with the concentration skill, I think it was. These overlapping plates of pitted vibrating iron bond, iron bond with the user, injecting them with a milky fluid that fills them with strength and, and rage. Oh, dart thrower! You are right! You are right! Q without E. Um, I thought it was a buzzer. No, someone else was at some point carrying a buzzer. You have a dart thrower, but they are so similar that I... Um, mistook it for, for a buzzer. Um... I found a character sheet from a space one shot. The player described the character as as follows: Shatua, sexy. Um, that might have been someone named Robin. I don't know. I don't know who that Robin is, but he sounds like a very funny, nice, and sexy guy. <clears throat> or girl. Robin, Robin is a name for both of her, of, of most of both of them. Um, so, uh, do we buy anything? I don't. I don't. I don't know. Why should I? I especially. Mm, eh. Maybe I want the Sting Charge. For energy damage. Even plus 12 if we use the effort. Well, who who has the most speed? You have six. Oh, you have eight. But no, you are a melee fighter. So we have the most speed. Maybe then I should. Uh, and my movement is my movement. No, my running. I have an inability in running. So if Elegon or I. No, not Elegon. So if I took. And I have one point in light weapons. Uh, mm, uh. Okay, okay. Then I I get this light weapon sting charge for me. I I buy something. Oh, uh, uh, wrong wrong option. The sting charge for energy damage, plus twelve maybe, even. but short range, but still just so much better than the buzzer. Yes, light ranged weapon. That's what I want. Uh, mm, uh, bye! <gasps> I've bought something! Oh, Snowsons! I never do that. And I still can use the shield? The shield? Wait. Okay, yes, the shield is still in effect. Nice. I wouldn't have thought that. In Q without E, do you have um, for tonight's episode of our pen and paper? Do you have? Can you throw some things out there that we should um, know beforehand? So uh, maybe even maybe you could tell me what kind of music is today's session. Um, Fine. Yes, let's continue. Uh, let's let's. let's Let's see what we have here. 
Hundreds of leathery wings flutter against each other like they are trying to escape. They grow haphazardly, one sprouting from the next. These are wings. If you say so. A swollen mass of wet, glistening muscle quivers in the vat. This vat is filled with wriggling reptilian tails, knotted and tangled together. Hey ho! Anybody want some meat? Maybe the child. Did you see all the blood over there? Someone must have killed a hundred people. What's the jagged dream? And those two weird people keep talking about it. Mapper's really good at finding stuff. The meat monger smells like feet. My mother says she's tougher than the bloom. It spit her out. It spit her out? Okay. The loud foreman keeps yelling whenever I visit, but the pretty one lets me draw on his foot. I stabbed someone once. I didn't like it. Nice child. Of course. <clears throat> okay. Hey, meatmonger, what... What do you have here? You want meat? I got meat. Um, a short, solid man stands behind a smoking grill, turning pieces of... Meat with a pair of grimy tongs. Sweat is pouring down his grizzled face. Yet he's covered head to toe in grease-spattered clothes. His sleeves are tied at the wrists and his collar pinches his neck. Nearby are three large vats that are filled with living meat. Great amorphous masses of it. With appendages growing from them like the limbs of animals drowning in a meat swamp. The first vat is filled with thick throbbing muscles red and raw. The second is a flapping monstrosity of leathery wings, and the third sprouts hundreds of lark tails, all wiggling obscenely. Lark tails! Do you remember, Cute and Heldrick? Your first enemies in, in Numenera, I think. Uh, the cook looks up from his work and gives you a sweaty smile. Hey! <coughs> hey! Hey! Hey ho! I'm Monk the Meatmonger. What do you have? What kind of meat do you sell? <laughs> he laughs and bangs the grill with his tongs, making sizzling grease fly. Three kinds, friend. Anine, Drabble and Lark. Right in those vats, actually. Want some? Um... Well, what's so funny about that? <laughs> um... Uh, I've never seen meat grow in the vat before. How does it work? How? <laughs> Couldn't tell you. Found a little doodad back when I was a butcher, and I'd fiddle with it all day long. Kind of like I do now with my tongues. He waves the tongues around to show you what he means. <laughs> so, one day, I was fiddling with this thing while cutting up a car crash, and it kept growing back its missing parts. Cut the tail off, and there it was again a moment later. <laughs> Crazy, right? But it gave me an idea. I could open a little grill with no overhead, and it worked. Been cooking the same three hunks of flesh for years now. Mmm. And there's a possibility that you'll all die. Oh. And yes, that sounds like we need fight music as well as fight and mysterious. <laughs> the Lark Mutti. Yes, <laughs> your first end gegner, the Lark Mutti. <laughs> and still, I have still no better way to describe her as the Lark Mutti. Um, who I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I've never died in a pen and paper before. Or did I? I can't remember if I did. I don't think I did. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Fight and mysterious. You get that. Cute without you. You'll get that. Um, well, this sounds really not that appetizing, but okay. Ooh, good question. <clears throat> Can you use your doodad on yourself? <laughs> Funny you should ask. Not longer after I found it, I cut myself pretty good. Thought I'd try using my doodad to close up the wound. 
Well, it worked. But then I started growing toes all over my body. Didn't care for that at all, so I never did it again. Still trying to get rid of the toes. Did you say you have toes growing all over your body? Hey, we got all our, we all got our problems, and I got it better than most around here. Ain't my fault anyway. Well, I guess it's a little bit my fault. Okay. Why are you all bundled up like that? I think the toes have something to do with that. On account of the toes, nobody wants to see a man with toes growing all over his body, especially if he's cooking their food. Not even people in the underbelly got strong enough stomachs for that. Uh, maybe I should have eaten something before the stream so I don't feel so queasy now. <sighs> uh, okay. Did you see Matkina? <laughs> Noah well, Noah well. Buys from me all the time. Haven't seen her in a while though. You might ask Mapper over there by the shanties. He'll be the one with the maps on his skin. Keeps tracks of track of everybody. Maps on his skin. Mapper is an apt name for that. I'd like to buy do we do we want to buy some meat? Oh don't we? <laughs> That's a good point, Heldrick, but... Hmm. I just don't like doing that. I, sometimes I do, you know that, sometimes I do, but... I would have... I should... I, I have to make some food for that. So I pr have to prepare it. And I didn't, so... Now I'm all out of options, because Kitty Cat is not here. She's working today. Um... And if she doesn't make my food, I have to do it. And I... We sometimes joke that I get nourishment from the, the radiation of my display. Um, so I, I don't have... I don't feel hunger when I'm gaming. Mukbang. And no coffee, yes, but that's, on an empty stomach, that's good for the stomach and for my sanity. And also, um, I start to babble with coffee and I, my, my English, I lose my English sometimes. So we, I all, all also said to her that some, maybe I don't need, I don't need only one cup of coffee when I'm on, on a Sunday. No, not yet. I didn't eat at all. But... That brings me back to my question. Should, uh, should we buy some meat from the meat monger? The toe guy. <laughs> Eating is important. So... Is it helpful? You mean eating? Ah, the meat! I don't know! Uh, really, I think we get a nice status effect, but I don't know how long it lasts. Um, let's see what he says when we click on it. Sure! What would you like? An inchang, treble wing, lark tail? Let's buy and try. I need Drebble or, or Lark. What should we try first? I would say Lark, because we know what a Lark is. Be <laughs> you mean like in Rocky, right? That's what you mean, Heldrick. Um. <laughs> you should know. Two shins. Pay him. He shrugs, giving you a dubious look. Okay. Uh, with a quick motion of his hand, Mark tears two wriggling lark tails from the vat, twists them together and ties them into a loop. Then he drops them on the grill where they begin to sizzle and spit. As they cook, the green and white color grows brighter and more intense. After a short while, Mark takes them from the grill and hands them to you. I don't want a dubious look from my meatmonger. 
I don't eat meat, but I would be very disconcerted if he did that. Somehow the tails are still wriggling as you take a tentative bite. The meat is flaky, overly sweet, and it fizzes in your mouth like bubbly water. Ah, Moik shakes his head. Kids love those things. Ah, kids love those things. Can't stand it myself. Let's take another bite. Um, now the anin. Also two shins. Okay. Moik nods, saunters over to the vat of red throbbing muscles and carves off a slice. He spears the meat with a sharpened bone skewer and slaps it onto his grill, sprinkling it with a flurry of spices. When the meat is cooked, he hands you the skewer and you take a bite. The meat is gamey and a little tough, but the spices are so intense that you hardly notice, like meat does. That's a folk eat that three times a day. Wish more of them would give my drabble wings a try, but this is their loss, hey? You take another bite of the yanin meat, trying to get a sense of the flavor that lies beneath the heavy spice. Its tastes, taste summons a welter of memories. You've eaten yanin flesh before, perhaps many times. It evokes a vague sense of desperation, of a vast ruined landscape. Detonations erupting around you. Oh, the endless battle. Scavenging the bodies of fallen beasts for food. You realize that it isn't one memory, but many, many. Lifetimes, perhaps, in a hellscape of war. The memories fade. Ooh. Memories through food. Uh, through taste. I... I get that. <laughs> yes, it sounds... Everything here sounds horrible. I agree, cute without E. Basically, arsenic. You mean... <laughs> because of Indy? I mean, it both luck and in our campaign. You did! I remember you did eat anin, but did you eat lark as well? Did you take some parts of... I think you... Yes, you cut up the lark, Mutti. <laughs> right, so now let's see how the wings taste. I think... I mean, it's wings, so... Do, do you think they are like chicken wings or more like chips? They looked... They looked pretty thin to me on in the vet on the left. Let's see. The Drabble Wings. That'll be two shits. <laughs> Good choice! Moik produces a jagged knife and saws one of the leathery wings from the fluttering mass and tosses it onto its grill. It flaps weakly for a few moments, then lies still. An aroma like sweet baking fruit begins to rise from stiffening wing. After a short time, Moik lifts it from the grill with a pair of tongs and hands it to you. You take a bite. The wing is crunchy and sweet with a rich and fruity taste. Good, eh? Nobody believes it till they try. Ha. I eat them all day long. Keeps me trim and handsome. Okay. I think... There's nothing else, no. Ah, uh, yeah, lark tail, and I've changed my mind. And uh, never mind, farewell. Right, friend, come again. This was the meatmonger. Don't okay. mind if I do. Papa, oh. Mike's no meatmonger, he's an artist. I was a scholar once, and that'll all be behind me now. <sighs> Mike's travel wings changed my life. What? I sold everything I own so I can eat here once a day until I die. Try the anine shank, go on, and blow your throat open. When I die here, maybe he'll cook me. Wouldn't that be a treat? Okay. Are these all maniacs here? <clears throat> a stabbing child would be cannibal. Of course. A headless man? Okay. Um, so as I cut up the lake for rations, I hope like chicken. I, I mean, they were fantastic, it seems. The lake for rations? I don't remember that. Um, no. Headless man. He barks at me. Oh. 
Okay. Paranoid man. You know too, don't you? You smell the corruption? Yes, the Jagged Dream is down here too. The Jagged Dream won't rest until Sagas is drowning in blood. Someone killed Fulsome's apprentice. <laughs> I told them war was coming and they left! They want us doubting each other and starting fights? They smirk behind their sleeves when we die? I've heard things, you know? Things I shouldn't. I had to run, had to leave everything behind. But the Jagged Dream is looking for me, I have no doubt. One day, I'll just disappear. <clears throat> Paranoid woman. I see things, you know? I have special eyes. Do you see them too? Do you see the hooded strangers? The nameless servants of the council? Weedle is only the first. Mark my words. He's not the only one I've seen with a hooded shadow. I think they're levies. They have to be. Levies gone wrong. I peered into one of those hoods once. I saw the twisted flesh. The gaping, toothless mouths. They'll take me one day. They know where I am. Okay. I'm ready. Creepy people. I don't think I've talked to him. Okay. Sure. <laughs> my <laughs> you met my cue without me. My jo Joker laugh is it comes way too easily. On it. I'm <laughs> a little surprised myself. <laughs> Keep your hands clear of the workers. They've got a job to do. Okay, okay, so uh, we haven't missed anything here. Let's see what the mutant does. This looks uncomfortable. How does he sleep? Oh, hello! I know you. You're dead. <laughs> you shouldn't sleep. Things catch up with you. I have blood trapped beneath my tongue and I'm keeping it. <laughs> She's going to find you, you know. I had a head once. Where's that head? <laughs> that head? I lost my head. That's nothing compared to what you're going to lose. Please just leave me alone. Okay. Uh, sounds like I've talked to him already. Okay. Um, yes. Oh, that's Elegant's no. station. A pair of gauntlets sits on the table. They look as though they are intended to provide real-time analysis and physical monitoring of any human arm placed inside. Look out below. Above. Sideways. Sideways. On the shelf is a collection of wafer-thin slides containing cross-sectional cuts of living tissue. Some of the flesh still squirms. This machine collects and collates a variety of samples, preparing a full analysis of their physical, psychic and dimensional properties. And this device appears to store nano spirits in states of energy. It is dusty and unused. Here we go then. Does anything happen happen when I step in here? No. I know that's Elegant's workbench, but he doesn't mention it. Weirdly enough. Are we holding up? Oh, okay. Let's continue. Why not? Another mutant. It gotta be tough to run a business down here. If you, even if you got bone, if you're bone share, I don't know what. If you pay your fees on me, the thugs don't bother you. Come see me if you get a cat from the area. It's called Blue Lang. Don't ask why. Come Come Okay. Month pa. <laughs> okay. Um, 
that's comforting. This listen. I have never read that word. This listen Jack looks down on his luck, judging from his bare feet and dust jerkin, but he takes in his surroundings with a hopeful gaze. As you approach, he smiles and throws out his arms in greeting, which reveals the tools of his trade on his belt. Um, how now, help me? Got any? He stops as he sees Tybe with you. Tybe? Good to see you! As I heard, you and Drizzt were running from the levees. Slipped him again, eh? This your new crew? Looking for an in-and-out man? I'm free at the moment and ready to and able to do some crimes. Man, my boy, always joking. And so loudly. He puts an arm around the young man's neck and snugs him in a little too tight. Oh, ba -ba -ba. Someday someone going to hear one of your loud jokes and call the watch on you and me. I know, this is not my new crew, this is my friend, who I am helping find his way around the pitfalls of our great city. Manth is actually the most honest boy in Saga's Cliffs. Aren't you, Manth? I... Why, yes, yes I am. They don't come much honester than Manth, pa. I pretty much sit around all day think thinking of ways I could be more on Tybus meaty palm covers Manth's mouth. That's fine, lad, that's fine. You know... Manth has the most dangerous job in Saga's Cliffs. He's a window washer. Hangs out over the sea faces of those cliff houses and scrubs away without a care. And if that weren't enough, when he's not working, he's down here in the underbelly, helping people find their way around. Go on, just ask him. He knows everything about the place. That's right. <coughs> ask me anything. You want to hear about the people who live here, or maybe the sticker tunnels, or the manufactory, or those crazy dendro who bastards? Um, well, everything. Give me your general take on the underbelly. It's the bottom of the ladder. As they say around here, there ain't no more down to go. But that's a good thing, right? Means you've got nowhere to go but up. <laughs> a passing thought dims his cheery expression. Unless you drown or get swallowed by the bloom or something. Okay. Mm. Tell me about the people here. Uh, well, I won't talk about everyone. There's a lot of us here, but I'll hit the highlights. Or lowlights, I guess. He starts to count them off on his fingers. There's Fulsom, of course. He runs things around here. Not officially, mind you. He's just the sharpest chigan with the hardest crew is all. Michaela, who sells bits and bobs at her stall. Mark the meatmonger, who sells... Uh, meat? Uh, tell Mark I sent you if you pay him a visit. Damn. He gives me a shin for each referral. Uh, let's see. There's Elegant, the arrow priest, who... Oh, <laughs> there you are, Elegant. I was just about to say wonderful things about you. I'll bet. Go on. Uh, sure. Then there's Mapper, Crazy Cargo, who's covered in maps and... Well, I suppose there's Crooked Queek. She's not very interesting, but she looks funny, if that's your float. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you know about the sticker tunnels? They've dug them all over the place around here. You only see the ends of them, since they fill them with loose dirt that only they can dig through. Seems like they're digging up the whole city's foundation. Now that the tunnels start down here, no idea where they end. What about the manufactory? The heart of industry in Saga's Cliffs. People think only the crazy and the crooked live down here in Underbelly, but if you want to see the hardest working people in the city, go look in at those furnaces. That's real work, that is. <laughs> Makes a fellow proud, okay. Tell me more about the Dendra Ohua, the cannibals that eat memories. The cannibals! <laughs> Uh, sometimes I think they do it just so they can be crazier than anybody else. I know they got some kind of mumbo-jumbo reason for eating dead folks, but I think they just like making people squirm, you know. Mm -hmm. What do you know about Matkina? Uh, if, you, if you wonder who Matkina is and why I ask everyone about Matkina, she's another cast-off, and she's supposed to... 
mm, be able to help us. Because she... Yes, she might be able to tell us where the person is that helped us build the resonance chamber. I think that's why we want to find her. The White Death! <laughs> you ain't crazy, are you? Sorry, sorry, none of my business. I couldn't tell you where she is, but you might want to talk to Mapper. He's squatting in one of those, on one of the shanties down here. If there's any place she can hide, he'd know about it. Okay, talk to old Mapper. Keep an eye, sit. Let's go. I don't know what a sit is. Underbelly thuck. Fine. Okay. Tiny dwellings are carved into the rock wall, furnished with reeking bed growths and bug infested rags. I mean, I know that this is sad that people live in here, but on the other hand, I don't know. Sleeping in a rock foundation with candles, at least uh, only one time, it would be, I think, very cozy. Well, well when the noise isn't here in the factory. Manufactory. Um, we. Uh, meat monger. Yes. Uh, blah 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 sent us. I want to tell him. Mm. Month pass said that I should pay you a visit. Good old. <laughs> Good old man! You'll get a shin for that next time I see him. Maybe I'll keep it on the straight. Have I. Haven't I asked them that? Oh. No, well, well. But... Oh, no, no, I have asked them that. Okay. Mm. So there's Mappa we have to talk to. One pauper. Here's nothing anymore. Huh. Leave me be, he says. Will you not respect my wishes? I don't like it here. I didn't choose to come here. Your bloom stole me from my world. The bloom swallowed me whole and spat me out. I think it was the taste of my daughter inside me. Oh. You butcher each other in this filthy world and leave bloody pools behind. Why? My daughter's blossoming here, becoming sharper, smarter. I am withering. Please leave me alone. Okay, uh, I think that's your daughter. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm changing guard cultist. What do you say? What do you say? The cultist glances over at you casually. His eyes widen when they reach your face. I heard you intended to explore the city, but never imagined you'd find your way down here. What an honor. He folds his hands before him. How can I help you, beloved vessel? I'm looking for... Oh no, first, of course, stare at people. That's always the first thing you should do. The man is pale, dirty and nervous. He's stealing glances at your tattoo every chance he gets. He flinches when he notice you, notices you studying him. Have you seen Matkina? The castle? Not recently, but she does work with Fulsom from time to time. He may know where she is. Okay, you are boring. Um, then let's look at this writhing let's mass go. of stuff. A dark sphere inhabits almost every socket in this obelisk that stretches toward this cavernous ceiling. No one else seems to be paying the art structure any attention. Like most Numenera, it's simply here. And if it can't be used, it's treated as part of the scenery. The orbs gleam in the dim light. You lean toward them. Are they glass? Jewels? Eyes? To me, they look like... 
like buttholes. The mountain of buttholes. This is what it looks like to me. A flicker from one of the orbs above you catches your eye. You look up just in time to see the image of a woman leaning toward the surface of the glass from the inside. Touch it. Your finger barely grazes the glass before it displays the image of a furred creature touching the surface from the other side. Purple vines threaded with veins of light hang from the branches of the tree behind it. Trees behind it. You lift your fingertip and darkness swallows the creature. The orb is opaque once more. The orbs appear to reflect whatever action is performed in front of them. Hum a little song. Nothing appears in any of the dark orbs. Instead, the whisper of many voices joined in song curls from the obelisk so low that only you can hear it. Um, tell it a secret. Okay, see you soon. With your lips nearly brushing the surface, you whisper a thought you've never told anyone. A too tall, narrow-hipped being, a visitant, appears in the glass, long fingers clasped. Meeting her eyes, it speaks words you cannot hear. Um, make a rude gesture. Make the most obscene gesture you can think of at the glass. Yeah! <laughs> a young woman with rainbow pupils appears in the glass, flicking her fingertip across her chin. She nods, grinning, as if imagining your shock at her daring. She insulted us with her finger. He shakes his fist at the glass. Come out and do that again, I dare you. A towering creature of flesh and crystalline muscle shakes a glittering fist, fist, fist back at him. Aha, another challenger. Come out of there, you cowards. I'll fight you one by and one all, all together. <laughs> you tell Emeritus. He glares at the now dark glass, then snores. <laughs> Hiding in the dark, eh? I thought so. Make an even ruder gesture. The rainbow-eyed woman rewards your gesture with one of her own. She jabs a finger at her knee, grinning at her own audacity. Oh, this is... Oh. Oh. This is how the Numenera num should be used, all right. Insulting people across time and space. Hmm. Faint hints of movement at the heart of every spear. Okay, touch it again. Again? Okay, leave it alone. But I want to make a... This is supposed to be my thumbnail. Yes. Oops. Do we have a, do we have a th thumbnail now? Yes, we have. Okay, good. Uh, maybe, maybe we. Of course. So, we have a thumbnail now. Good. <laughs> um, mutant papa. Month pa. Blah blah. Nigella. Of course. Meatmonger. Nothing here. Well, maybe we should right. go here to Varenov, and then here to the. C crime scene. Hey, let's look. A flight of stone steps descends into the water. The cavern beyond gradually widens and connects to the sea. And it does the same in, in, in this place. <sighs> Very enough, or Crooked Creek. Let's talk to On Crooked Creek. I. Maybe you remember it, but Pico, the. Boy, man, um, who stood in front of the chirurgical parlor, I think they tell, they they call it, um, the place where you can where you, you can put your implants, get your implants and other stuff, and he wanted to use that to become stronger or smarter or especially looking better. And we told him to have a fun time with his money. And he mentioned that Crooked Creek was his own only friend when he grew up. Okay, Creek. 
A small, hollow-cheeked mutant sings a soft, wavering tune to herself. Yellow bruises discolor her skin, wounds formed not from violence, but from malnutrition, and her prominent bones bend and twist at odd angles. Still, she smiles. She smiles at the oily water, devoid of any fish. She smiles as she arranges her empty basket beside her, and she smiles at you when she sees you standing over her. Hello, I'm Crooked Quig of the Cold Canyon Tribe. I haven't seen you down here before. I hope you're not here to fish. They are nibbling instead of biting today. <coughs> she cuffs into her cupped hands a raw and ragged hacking that bends her double. We take her for a child at first, but after studying her features, it's clear she's in her late teens. It's only some mutation and a bony stature, born of starvation, that makes her seem more childlike. Is the Cold Canyon tribe here too? No, they're all gone. Either dead or, or gone. She still isn't meeting your eyes. There used to be a lot of us, but uh, when we came here when I was a baby, running from a war. Some sort of war that never ends. My parents thought we would be safe here, but the tribe died off, one by one. She turns away, wiping her eyes. The city is hard on people like us. How was it hard in the tribe? They were used to living in the wilderness, so they knew what they could eat safely. Here? It's not so simple. My mother told me that ten people died eating tainted food before we found this fishing hole. She stares into the murky water. Then there's the diseases you can catch in the city and the hate. A lot of us were killed just for being... hard to look at, I guess. Is it hard for you to survive here as it was for your people? No, I don't have a lot to eat, but I'm more resistant to sickness than my parents were. And people here know me. They leave me alone. Everyone is dead? Not everyone. She says with a brave little smile. I'm here. And some of us just left for better places. I bet they are doing really well. Your real name is Crooked Creek? Sort of. My parents called me Queek, but the nickname came later. She hunches over, her eyes darting shadily from side to side. It's because I sell junk for high prices and bribe the levies to carry people off in the night. <sighs> no, not really. People call me crooked because I look twisted and broken. Don't you mind that? Not really. I can't call them liars, can I? She smiles, but it's not the radiant thing you saw before. Oh, Crooked Creek, I like you. Why don't you think, why do you think the fish aren't biting? The fish down here are pretty fast and smart. They're nibbling at the bait, then swimming away. She watches the line with a combination of hunger and weariness. It's hard for me to get to the pole in time when the rod twitches and harder to reel in the catch. I'm not very strong. Can I try? <laughs> You're welcome to it. Only if you do find something, could you share? Never mind. Company is better than a scrawny fish. Um, do you know Matkina? Matkina? That's not what people call her. She leans towards us. Like a golem? They call her the White Death. She's an assassin. I don't know where she is, and I hope I never do. Why are you scared of her? They say... They say she can freeze your blood by speaking your name. And if you look her in the eyes, all of your hair will turn white. Do you believe that? No? But she is a killer, and I... I have a soft spot for scary stories. Mm. <laughs> this... This... This answer is... Heartbreaking. Are you sure you don't mind people call you crooked? I do. But I won't be less crooked if they stop. Come back anytime. Huh? Action. 
I really don't see what people mean. Okay, let's catch some fish for a crooked creek. Yes. Yes. This thin glowing thread pierces the surface of the water and plunges deep into the black depths like a white line drawn in sh shining ink. Examine it. You try flicking the shining string and your finger goes right through it. Could you try catching something for me? I've had no luck today. Besides, everything down there is pretty much stronger than me. Try catching something for Crooked Creek. You pull on the line and something in the dark below pulls you back. It uh, pulls back. You press your lips together and reels and reel in your catch. A muddy cipher dangles from the end of the line. It's beautiful. I was just hoping for fish I can sell it and eat for weeks. Okay. I know what I would choose, but this is t you choose the voices, I choose the choices? No, you know what I mean. Should we keep the cipher or should we hand it over to Crooked Creek who needs it very, very much more than we do? I kind of was hoping for no answer because then I can say hand it over to Crooked Creek. Yes, we do. You pass the cipher to her and she squinches her eyes shut in unmitigated joy. Thank you. Use my fishing pole whenever you want. Tap on the line. You take hold of the fishing rod and begin reeling in the line. But nothing is on the hook. You might have better luck tomorrow. No, I guess not. Okay. Then talk to Veranoth. He looks... Is this... A Viking? Numenera Viking? This large and heavily muscled woman wears what appears to be rags that should have fallen apart ages ago. She looks so tired that it wouldn't be a surprise if she fell asleep on, on her feet. And yet, when she opens her mouth, her voice is energetic, like a little girl who's about to get a present. Hello! Can anyone hear what I'm saying? I can't make this work! Without warning, she slaps herself. Ah, I, I hope no one saw that. Who are you? Are you talking to me? Her head swivels awkwardly around, trying to catch a glimpse of you. Oh, you are! My name is Veronov, champion of the wastes! The woman flinches at the sound of the very different booming voice. Oh. My name is Veronov, champion of the wastes! The woman flinches at the sound of the very different booming voice that came from her own mouth. That's not my name, you stupid thing. It's Varanov, champion of the wastes. Damn! I come from a land you've never heard of. Damn it. I guess I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> um, your control... Uh, oh, pff, so you... <laughs> um, do you have, an, have a preference? Um, sorry, that would be the smart answer. And I choose these things every time I play a game. So I want not, I, this time I don't want to choose it. So, sorry, no. Um, who's screaming at me? She is. Um, it looks like there's a little girl controlling her and speaking for her. But every time she tries to say um, who she is or if she's coming from, Varanoth, the construct, um, steps in and says she's Varanoth, champion of the wastes. Yes. This is the smart option, the funny option, and this is the third option. Um, what, what should we say, who without E? 
Funny. So you aren't Varanoth, champion of the wastes? I'm not, but you might as well call me that. Or just Varanoth. I'm not actually here, I'm just talking through her and trying to move her around. It keeps yelling over me if I talk about something I'm not supposed to. But maybe if I speak carefully. Hmm? My family explores the world using special tools. The body stabs itself with its finger pointedly. But they tell me I'm too young to help, so I waited until everyone was sleeping and, you know. The head lolls back on its neck, winking at the roof of the cavern. Are you an explorer too? Um. Do we lie to the kid? And see what this, where this gets us, or not? One. Okay. 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 Oh. Oh. For some reason I thought that you were a champion of the wastes, too. Damn it, did it again. Didn't it? Just don't tell anyone what I am, all right? Um, what can that do? Well, it's really hard to break. My mother, that she usually controls it, once got stepped on by an adult earth shaker and just stuck her in the ground like a nail. The woman flexes a massive bicep. Am I flexing? I'm trying to flex. Anyway, it's also incredibly strong. Punch holes in mountains strong. The arm flops back to her hip. And it's not really a construct. There's no metal inside. She has blood, bones, perfect human expressions. But you can tell that from how I do it. The girl adds sourly, the woman's face grimaces along with her. Where did you get it? I was born in a storm on a battlefield at night! <sighs> the girl says after a respectful silence, she really doesn't want me to tell you what I just tried to tell you. Um, can't you tell me? Seats! Oh. oh, she let me say it. But I probably won't get away with more. Sorry. Mm. Why do your people explore? Our impenetrable fortress in a lost valley is falling apart. I think we should just go out in the, into the world for real, but no, my family is afraid. The fingers on the woman's right hand wiggle like they are playing an instrument. Her dead expression doesn't change even as the girl's voice rises. I'm not, of course, but they won't even let me use this this thing, I have to sneak around, like a child. Mm. Because we're looking for a new home, but Aragoth, Lord of the North, thinks we'll die if we go out without... Oh, it did it again, didn't it? Who are you again? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, farewell, Varanoth. Okay. I love Numenera. Um, of course. So, paranoid. There's... Okay, what's in here? Before we go to the crime scene. There's loot! Loot, 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 loot. Okay. And... Ooh. A crunched in stickers, I think. You find a jumbled pile of large rocks at the end of this roughly hewn tunnel. The motionless limbs of a stickers protrude from the mound. The rents and its carapace painted with dried ichor. Loot! Move the rocks to re uncover the corpse. Of course, this isn't Eretus the one to do that? Yes, he is. 90% should be enough. Success! The first rock is the hardest to shift. Once you warm to the task, you are nearly flinging them aside until you have fully exposed the corpse beneath. Examine it. Clearly, the creature was digging this tunnel when the roof collapsed and killed it. Its smaller claw is mangled and smashed, but apart from the crushed thorax and a few gashes in its, gashes in its carapace... Cutie... Uh, welche nun? Cute... 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 Cutie cat! 
Miam, miam. Sag das nochmal. Genau. Kitty Cat, miau, miau. Hallo. Coffee time. <laughs> yes. She has that effect on me. Um, examine it again. Uh, nothing else. The corpse is surprisingly intact. Step away. This is a sticker's corpse. Neisenstein. Don't mind if I do. Mm, don't mind if I do. Okay, so let's talk to um, Mapper. All right. All right. From a distance, it looks as if this mutant is wearing a form-fitting suit of finely patterned lines in white, yellow, and pale blue. On closer examination, it becomes apparent that these are tattoos, and they cover nearly the entirety of this body, even his shaved head. His actual clothes are simple and worn, and his boots look as though they've seen hard use. He is studying the meaningless swirls and horse <laughs> on his arms, and mouthing names on to say horse about that sounded too much like, well, hookers. On his arms and mouthing names that mean nothing to you. So we... Balance. There you go. Ten trees. When he looks up at you, you see that a strange device covers one of his eyes. A deep blue light shines in its center and it seems to measure and evaluate you as he focuses on you. He smiles as you approach. A broad, beaming grin that says he considers you a friend already. I'm Mapper. He's extending his extending his hand. I've been everywhere around here. I found my way into places long sealed and best forgotten. But all sorts of people. Can't say I cared much for some of them, it's true. His voice is fast, insistent and incisive. Thank you. That's what I needed to read. Still, I try. The communities of our world are islands of light. Sometimes they wink out and sometimes they flare up. I want to link them together. I want to be a bridge. Uh, where did you get all those tattoos? These. These are not tattoos, they are maps. <laughs> maps of places I've been or heard of. He covers the artificial eye with his hand and says, If I look at my skin like this, it's meaningless. Then he uncovers it and says, But look at it like this, suddenly I see the map. Springing up off my skin, I focus on it. It all comes clear. Buildings, people, smells. Even a route to get there. It's worthless to anyone else, of course, without me to interpret the map. It's a combination of my mutation and the lens. Finding the eyepiece was the best part of being born like this. <sighs> it made me feel like my life made sense at last. And that, my friend, is far more luck than anyone deserves. Mm. His eyes... His easy grin pops up. You mean the maps? My life's work. I mean, literally, eh? I go someplace, or I hear about someplace, and the lines start to curl and twist on my skin. I look at them through this, and they come clear, they make sense, I know that. I don't really get how he does it, but okay. Um, where have you been? Ha! <laughs> it's probably easier to ask where I haven't been. All over the Sagus Protectorate, the Oasis of Mar Jolios, Valley of Dead Heroes, Cone Village, the ruins of Archipelagia, and all around the Black Cube, Tower of Birds, where third loss fell, even up past the clock of Kala to Vralk. And I spat on my display. Ugh. As he speaks, the lines of his body shift and move, coming to prominence with the words. Every place was a treat, an experience. Did you know most people never go more than 50 kilometers from the village of their birth? If that, I've been tremendously lucky, my friend. Then he looks back at you and says more quietly, if you plan to travel, I'd avoid the grasslands, though. The birds will take your meat of their meals and your for their meals and your bones for their nests. Mm -hmm. Nothing new about your tattoo? Okay. Uh, I mean, new about the places? He looks down at his stomach, and his, as his smiling gaze falls upon the lines, they start to flow and writhe. Too many to count. Memories stack and overflow, but the maps paint the territory, make each place distinct, join the world together, like Vralkir, a place of blasted serpents, vicious plants, and evil people. Still, 
It has its own, it has its own twist of beauty. Or take the oasis, the water bubble in the middle of the lost sea. I can see them even now. Okay, how do you even do that? Being a bridge, I mean. He shrugs a faint smile on his lips. I travel, I see places. I map them out on my skin and maybe inside me? I don't know. I mean, the lines change when I look and they've got to be stored someplace, right? He scratches his bald head. The lines flow under his fingers. I just need to collect places. I need to know what I've done something. That I've done something. Making maps is all I know. That's all I want to know. And what? He beams. I travel. I go all, o I go all over. I add to my maps. I learn places inside and out. And they become part of me. <laughs> Why else does anyone travel but to take a piece of their destination with them? Me? I just get more. Kitty cat, meow meow! Coffee. It's Leben as well. Still hot. I'm looking for Matkina. I'll remember that. Matkina, the White Death. I've heard of her. I know where she hides too. He grins wide, exposing a mouthful of extraordinarily white and clean teeth. I can tell you where she is, but I hate to say it comes with a price. Much as I love to talk about my travels, I need to finish a patch of my Saga's Cliffs map and I need bragging, bragging rights for the next time I see the navigators. Also, she might not be happy I've told. But I might be able to help you find it, for a trade of course. Have you ever heard of the Changing God? Savior of Saga's Cliffs and times past and so forth? They say he had a sanctuary under the city. A place he used to retreat to and plan for the future while he thought on his past. You know, making possibility maps? That sanctuary is the one important place I haven't seen in Saga's Cliffs. And I needed to fill in my map. As far as I can tell, it's not far past the sticker there. The problem I'm having is that I just can't make any sense of their language. Maybe you can talk to them. He shrugs disarmingly. It's a hell of a price, I know, but there it is. You want to find Matkina? You'll find the sanctuary for me. Why don't you go look for yourself? This gist stucking sticker, that's why. They've got their precious eggs in their lair and they won't let me in. It's not like I've got any interest in the eggs, but... Yeah. I got no patience for dealing with their clicks and drumbles. I just want to know. Got me? Uh, any way else besides? <sighs> there must be. Changing God wasn't the kind of person who'd put, just put one entrance into the place, but I haven't been able to find the back door for the life of me. I'm not doing any favors for you? Why not? I'll be... Some other questions? Go ahead. He blows out from his cheek. Cheeks. <laughs> That's a good question, friend. A good question. If I knew, I wouldn't be asking you, eh? All I know is that it's in a void beneath the city. Uh... You know how cities build and build and build on themselves? It's like that. What I mean is that sagas got built on top of an old sagas, and that got built on, an, on a sagas before that, before it was even sagas, right? So this old sanctuary, it's, one of, it's in one of the spaces between the eras, but I haven't been able to find a way to get there, and friend, believe me when I say that's the kind of thing that cocks me fierce. Find the void, and you should be able to find his place. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No meow meow. That's sad. What about the empty stomach? <laughs> uh, I hope so that... That... Well... <laughs> Cutie cat, did you see... You answered... You did the same mistakes that I do now and you are Cutie cat. You thought that cute without E was Cutie cat. No, that you, you know, you clicked on the wrong person, so you answered yourself. But when you said, don't worry, it will certainly happen again. But you wanted to tell cute without E that. But because you're also cute, it's hard to know what cuteness you want to talk to. <laughs> no, you're not a snitch cute without E. I brought Brachen! Rolls, that's it. And buns. But... Yes, but I think rolls and buns 
don't come close to our Brötchen. I think buns are really just just diese, diese ganz normalen dummen Brötchen ohne alles. Und Rolls vielleicht noch ein bisschen mehr. But none of them are real German Brötchen. Brötchen is live. That could have been on purpose. Yes, but I don't know. I don't think she's that schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have been talking to everyone of interest here, except for there are the Dendra Ahur, and I will gladly go there in a minute because they are interesting people. They are concerning themselves with the sticker and this here. Oh, well maybe we should do that now. No, we won't go. This The grisly crime scene is blocked by Fulsom and his thugs. We won't go there now because when we do, there is a timer. And every day we do not um, come closer to finishing this quest another person dies and I want to try it today or this playthrough without any further victims and I don't know if that's possible because all the other crimes give us other hints to find the culprit so I don't know if that's kind of scripted that we have to go through all the murders but I want to try <laughs> and those cretins don't have nice bakeries. Yes, that is totally correct. Uh, I like that word, cretin. And there, there's another similar one. Um, I don't know now. Uh, let's save. Underbelly. Um, well, that's... Yes, why not call it... Then, no, let's call it... Uh, what have we done just now? Fair enough. Ne, Mappa. Genau. Mappa. Okay. Then let's go here. Let's see what they are there. Oh. Where do we get there? To Cliff's Edge. To Circus Miner. To Government Square. I like. Maybe I don't know if it's geographically correct and possible what they that we can go here to Cliff's Edge and here to Circus Minor and here to Government Square, but I like it if maps have access to all other points of the city, so we don't always have to go through Government Square to go to Cliff's Edge or something like that. And my nose is itching. <sighs> so, Mechala Manufactory Elegance Lab. Let's go to. Let's go to. Let's get. Blah, 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 jungle. Okay, Levy, what do you say? Please do not make any threatening movements near Pili. Pili. Be careful, visitor. If you get into trouble here, we are not permitted to help you. Okay. Yes. Pili. What about ya? This violet-skinned visitant paces back and forth from the cavern's opening and wears fine clothes that serve to accentuate the tall, thin crest on its head. A symbol has been painted on the crest. Crests are these things. Um, mirroring the insignia marked on its chest, its clothes are finely tailored and well-made. The name of the creature's race crawls to your mind. It's a Vargellan. This one has temporarily chosen to be female. Her bulbous eyes flash quickly around her surroundings before focusing directly on you. Fluting? What's a fluting voice? I want to get it right, so I'll just look. What's fluting? Like a flöte? <laughs> flötend. Yeah. Eine flötende Stimme. Okay. Uh, high and fluting. <laughs> uh, 
You're aware that this... Uh, no, what? <clears throat> I know I don't have a... I don't really have a deep voice for a man. I, I have I pretty much, I think, a normal voice, but I... I... I can't get a, a high voice. I... I... <laughs> it's hard for me. My voice... I lose my voice when I make it high. Okay. The council didn't send you that much as... <laughs> the council didn't... The council didn't send you that much as plain. You're aware that this cave isn't safe, I hope. What exactly do you want? Uh... Where are you? An agent and negotiator, dispatched here by the council, but that should be obvious from my clothing and my guards. Uh, where are you again? An agent of the council, as I said. This cave isn't safe. Not unless you trust the discretion of this sticker. Those insectoid monsters that are prowling about, most people are afraid of them. Um, what council do you serve? She gives you an, an incredulous look. The ruling council of the city, of course. The heads of the slave families. You must be new to Cyrus Cliffs. Very new. What you doing there? I am conducting a diplomatic negotiation on behalf of the city. Unfortunately, I'm not dealing with the with a reasonable species. Her crest flutters irritably. I've made no progress at all. Days wasted in this miserable tunnel, and I have nothing to show my superiors. Maybe I can help you. She looks at us up and down, considering doubtful. But you might have other skills I can use. The circumstances call for a new tactic, and these levies cannot do what needs to be done. Nor can I. If you truly think you can help, let's put you to a test. She waves off the levies who flank her. Her gestures are short and choppy, sharp and irritated. It's this damnable sticker. I speak to them. I offer, cajole, negotiate, and threaten. Yet they persist in their digging, and every day another house in the cliffs above slips into the sea. If the digging does not cease, the city itself may crumble. So here's my request. Find a way into their lair, remove their precious eggs, and return them to me. These hostages shall ensure the future of the city above. If you can negotiate a lasting settlement that does not require such drastic measures, you may also pursue that method, but I have been trying for days with no success. I think I can help. Making a note. Good. We need to stop the sticker before they bring down the entire substructure of the city. If you manage to infiltrate their lair, be sure to acquire all their eggs. Suspect they will have multiple clusters and we will need them all if we want to negotiate from a position of strength. She hands you a synth ball with a blinking device inside. Once you're inside the lair and activate this, it will show you all the tunnels, the egg clusters and the sticker themselves. Better to know what you face before you charge ahead. A panor panoramic capture ball. A camera. What? Clears the fog of war. Perfectly spherical and brightly polished, this device activates when you throw it into the air. A rapid chirping sound follows and the sphere returns to your hands. The capture ball then displays images of your current environs on the screen, allowing you to see everything that is happening in your vicinity. It is able to peer through walls, doors and solid rock. The effect lasts until you leave the area. The panoramic capture ball passed from warlord to warlord for some time, traveling back and forth across the beyond before bringing, being lost to a Slitkin, who used the device to gain an advantage in the hideous game that Slitkin play against one another. One another. Slitkin are alive. The wise nano Awert Joe somehow penetrated Slit Slitkin society to regain the panoramic capture ball. But after delivering it to her home city of Sargus Cliffs, she retreated into seclusion. It is said that she that the images she saw captured by the ball gave her a perspective made perspective that made her lose interest in everyday affairs. Oh, I get that. Um some questions. 
<sighs> Very well. Be aware that the time you spend with me is more time for the sticker to undermine the city. How can I reach it? Updated my journal. If I knew, I would go there myself. The sticker are quick to dispatch intruders, and I doubt they would make take humans or Vagellans there of their own accord. Perhaps a construct of some sort of a digging machine. But I know little of fabrication or manufacturing, so I will leave that for you to explore. Uh, can you tell me about yourself? I'm Pelliai, an accredited agent of the slave families, and with a full faith and authority resolve the sticker crisis. I am Pelliai, in the employ in the employ of the slave families who govern the city. Have you seen Matkina? The name is familiar, and pale humans are rare. One would imagine I might recall someone of that description. Alas, I do not. Her crest deflates and reinflates slightly as she says this, and it reminds you somehow of evasion, deception. She lies to us. What do you know of Matkina? Nothing I have not already told you. My regrets. Um, what can you tell me? We will follow the Matkina topic in a minute. What can you tell me about this guy? Filthy animals scattering insects. Who can say if they even sentient. First and foremost, they dig, and they care nothing for the homes they destabilize or the lives that are lost when our buildings collapse. They do not speak the truth reli reliably, so we cannot know if they understand the damage they cause, though I suspect they do. Ask me your questions, perhaps we shall find a way to deal with these monsters. Um, she reminds me very much of Umbridge. Dolores Jane Umbridge. Mm, where do they come from? <sighs> if I knew I would send them back there in a tri trice. Some years ago, perhaps decades, they simply appeared here and they have been causing problems ever since. Anything else I convey is rumor and speculation. What I have told you is what I know. What are you doing here? I cannot imagine. They dig incessantly and they insist upon digging tunnels underneath the city, destabilizing the crag upon which Sagas Cliffs is built. Countless buildings have collapsed or fallen into the sea, more so than is ordinary, based on the shoddy construction so many of our residents employ. The problem has stuck, cl struck Cliff's Edge especially. Many loyal citizens have perished. Mm -hmm. They dig and dig and dig more. What they want is a mystery. They do not respond to us, they do not speak, they simply dig. How do you communicate with them? Her crest flutters as she hisses in irritation. I have not the faintest idea. I do not even know if they fully understand the truth. Perhaps the one that points at itself and shitters can help. I call it kicked. It can mutter a handful of words and perform some sign language. I have tried to negotiate with it, but I have, I have gotten nowhere. Fantastic diplomat she is. I had other questions. Um... Who are the slave families? She scoffs and then points to the sigil marked upon her breast. The slave families are the descendants of those brave souls who rose against the, inju the injustice of the previous rulers of Saga's Cliffs. Led by Chila the Great, they cast down the tyrants and tore their families asunder. The faithful who stood with Chila saw their service rewarded with stewardship of the city. Their descendants carry on with this grand tradition. They had made me their agent. Again, again, again. You... Anything more about... No. Mm -hmm. They are the leaders of the city, the shepherds of the poor and downtrodden. It is through their benefits that we... Beneficence! That we can continue to survive against those who exploit us. She waves a hand to indicate the surrounding cavern. They have made me their agent so they... Blah, 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 blah. You are familiar with Metkina, aren't you? She holds up her hands. Only by reputation, it may be that she found employment with the council at one time. I know no more. Mm -hmm. Any other ways into the sticker layer? Okay, farewell. Indeed. Let's talk to Chakekt. And also, I want to see if we have get a nice thumbnail here. Maybe we did. 
Okay, check act. Okay, check act. Drink coffee. Coffee is healthy. You know what? Before we talk to Chikekt, let's take a break. I have to pee, I have to get some more water, and maybe I'll shove a bite of something into my mouth. Um, see you in... No, I, I just saved, didn't I? Ah, no biggie. Um, see you in 90 seconds or a little more. Um, bis gleich! And we're live again. And I have Brötchen. Mmm. Okay. Mmm. Uh, <laughs> How come you want to eat ramen specifically? Have you seen some Japanese anime or show? Or have you watched NHK World Japan today? I. What I noticed just now, reading and eating, you can't do that at the same time. So, the next, some things, I will not voice the voices, but I don't think um, that so many people will miss that. So, I we will read in silent and eat doing that. Are they that short? Does he... Did you just watch a whole video while I was gone? Can you cook ramen in... I don't know, three minutes? Oh, cool. Does he do anything else but ramen or only Japanese? Cuisine or what? What are potato poppers? I've heard of them. Or oh, chili poppers. I know I know these words. Yes, no cheese poppers? I don't know. But I don't know what are poppers. They sound like potato balls. But I don't think they are little small potato balls. 
They are just... What are they? So. Nice meal. You gotta love Brötchen. Brötchen might even be better than toast brot. Balls, okay. Potato balls. Are they um, fried and crispy and crunchy or are they more like soft? With a whole lot of flavor in them. Poppers sound like crunchy on the outside, but soft in the in, in the inside. That's that what I always thought was a popper. Popper, popper. Mm. Now I have um roll beneath my between my teeth. Mm. Maybe you can make some someday when we visit you. Yes, I am that disgusting. I gurgle and squish and then swallow my water. Okay. <clears throat> um, anything new? <laughs> anything new about Pelii? More questions. Can you tell me about the sticker? It scrabbles briefly at the wall and a bit of lightning flares about the crown of antennae on its head. Its shoulders struck and you smell dust. We oui. <clears throat> Okay. Whatever they sound like, I can't make the sound, but I will try. <clears throat> These stickers live in rock. Dig deep. Devour electrical charge. Not enemy humans. Keep to community. Grow old in new home. More, perhaps. But it's detail long. Human not interest. <laughs> um. Speak. Skeg to it answer. Mm. Oh, there, there are so many questions I can ask him. Damn. Ooh, great plan, Q that out E. I support that wholeheartedly. Coffee is live. So. Mm. <clears throat> How did you come to be under Saga's cliffs? And trucks, <laughs> it's massive exoskeletal plates grinding. No ancient ever to tell. For generations only in caves, we live instinct. Only guess at legacy, memories stolen. It grows in frustration. It pats the wall nearby. Stickers hatch from egg, yes, yes. Traders come from evil bloom, other worlds. Ah. Think humans stole eggs. Humans brought eggs to world. Humans hatch eggs. Larval stickers. A mystery to buyer. Released here. Schkecht. <coughs> Exelves from its spiracles. Must guess at function, must guess at society, maybe advanced one, maybe great civilization. No, no, only dick, dick for clues. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Why are you digging here? This arm. Schkecht raises its great arm. Dick. Draw energy from rock, from friction. Eat electric charge. Store 
electric chart. It points to the spiky growths on its plating. Here, rock good, hard, much electric, best found, other places, not good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, why underpopulated areas? The sticker stares blankly at you, its eyes shimmering. It seems to be trying to put its thoughts into a statement you can understand. The sticker must survive, must live where food is, yes. It doesn't wait for an affirmation. Human watch every step, avoid stepping on insects, no impact of other life, sacrifice of others is natural order. It taps you in the chest. Smart for human. It points toward the rest of the underbelly. Not smart. Why concern? Not... Not sentient. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you, Q3D. My calendar? How can I see your calendar again? What calendar? Yeah, you mean the schedule when when I stream? Um Yes, okay. Um I think when you're on the desktop or laptop, and I think you are. I don't think you are using your phone. You're not a phone girl, you're a laptop girl. Um under the stream should be the home section and also the about section for example and also the schedule section if you click on the schedule you will see the schedule but i can also tell you the schedule or i can show you Yes, it worked. <laughs> this is the schedule. <laughs> um, always on Sunday, 10 a.m., Torment Tides of Numenera. And I think this will, we will do that a very long time because we're, as you see, we are still in the same city as 10 streams ago. Um, Oh, now you can't find it anymore. Oh, I don't know where it's gone to then. Mm. On this Wednesday, we will play Shantae, Risky's Revenge Director's Cut. It's a platformer, a Metroidvania platformer, pixel art. Pretty cool. You can you play a belly dancer who can, um, via her dances, she can transform into other beings. Um, a monkey, an elephant, and... The third one we will find next stream. And yes, th that's pretty cool. It's an action platformer. And I think also Wednesday will be the last stream we play that because I think I'm al almost finished with the game. And on Thursday, we will play Gothic 2 Die Nacht des Raben again. I have played a lot of Gothic 2 already. And I think this will then be the 20 first stream and i took a large break or long break um for this gothic stream and played shantae and nine parchments so wednesdays and thursdays i played other games because after 20 streams i needed some time off from gothic 2 and also um mestemba and ilbrick wished for for other games and i did that now one of them was shantae the other nine parchments and so Gothic 2 is now back on schedule and it's a third-person role-playing game and pretty, pretty good. I've played that many times already and now we, we're still in the add-on section, Yakenda, and I think maybe next stream we will be finished with the expansion setting and we'll get back to the main quest of the main game. 
So that's it. <coughs> the people are sentient. The stickers shifts its weight back and forth. Simple humans fight, eat, kill, try steal X, not harmony. Sentient. It trills out a scoff. I understand it completely. Mm. It's causing problems for the people above. Not concern to a sticker. Okay. There's a dead stickers. Nell tunnel. Brood made weakened. Could not feed self. Could not feed X. Dex tunnel to collapse on self. Not want burden. Ooh. Sticker family. The great head on the creature shakes ponderously. Barely strong enough to collapse tunnel. Failed in life. Too weak, perhaps. <laughs> I hope we're finished in a second with Chikekt. I'd like to ask other questions. More about the sticker? I think we have... We've asked all of this, we asked this, we asked this. Sorry. Do we? Mm hmm. She. So I think we all agree that we will not do as Pelei asks and steal the eggs from the sticker to have leverage and take them hostage. Um, over the sticker to tell them that they should dig other uh, someplace else. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I feel you. Um, but for me, the problem is mostly not the whiskey, um, but the screaming and singing at the concert. Yay! And and also trying to communicate with the people you came with. Um, <laughs> it's always. They're right next to you and you say, Hamina, Hamina, Hamina! And then they say, What? Hamina, Hamina, Hamina! Huh? Hamina, Hamina! Yeah! Because asking a third time what you wanted to say is. I don't know, it's not rude, but it's weird, and then you just accept that you can't understand them and say, Yeah, 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 funny, alright, good. Um, it needs to be both, yes. Whiskey alone doesn't make a deep voice. So, Q without E. And anyone else who's watching? Shavoxy maybe? Heldrick? I don't know. Cutie cat? Um, do we want to... Um, rat out Pelei? Or do we not? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I have come to ask you to stop digging underneath the city. I mean, asking? Why not? Why? Where we go? Give reason to stop. We can move deeper. Tribute of power sources. They are suffering. You want to have a future? Do you want war with the Williams? We we'll could have to talk about this trial. Good idea, Q without E. Oh. I thought that should be easier. <laughs> Oof, right. Um, I thought that... I think this will get easier when we give them other reasons that the humans are serious with that. I think I remember something there. Light is good. Light is good. Um, you can move deeper beneath the city. <laughs> well, five won't get us far. We have asked all of this. 
So I think we have to... Or, or maybe we can, we can wait. Uh, we can wait. And see what happens when we go here and there. Maybe we will find other hints that will... With which we'll be able to... This tunnel is blocked by debris, but it's loose enough that a burrowing creature could easily push its way through. Okay. And that we can persuade him easier. More easily. Juvenile stickers. What do you say? What do you say? Human is mushy like rough. Okay. That's stimmt. Human in tunnels, human not welcome. Oh, that's Elegan. Okay, nothing new. Okay. All right. This tunnel is blocked by debris, but it's loose enough that it still okay. Shouldn't I stick us? Human, why you come here? I don't know. Mm. There was nowhere else to go. Take all. This tunnel uh, also okay. Hey, Shiroxi! Welcome back! Welcome back! Welcome back! Welcome back! Welcome back! Welcome back! Woo! Uh, I don't know if I have to... <laughs> we are done at talking with the sticker. Um, we need to build the cabinet in the hall, but we couldn't finish because we broke one of the pieces. Ah, damn it! Ah, oh, shit. I hate this. I hate this. Uh, we had... What did... What kind of problem did we have that was similar? And why is it so dark in here? I think we will turn off one of the lights. Does this help in any way? A little. <laughs> it's a little bit more orange now. Um... <laughs> yes, I, I knew what you mean, but I, I know what you mean, but I don't know how Sekundenkleber is called in English. <laughs> Second glue. It sounds like glue that was already used, but you lose it a second time. Um. <laughs> um. No extra pieces. Damn. And glue. I would be. I'm skeptical about glue, especially when you build a cabinet. Uh, oh, I, I would be furious in in your stead. Hmm. Yes. I. If you say so, uh, but so it it's not visible, then that's fine. But does it doesn't it get weaker then, or is it not something that holds together the whole? Ah, one of the walls of the drawer. Ah, no, I see. No, that doesn't hold anything. Okay, okay. Then okay, that's fine. Glue, I accept your glue. Was das Leben? We will get back to the sticker here. Because um, sometimes, and that's the nice thing about... Uh, one, on the one hand, it's a nice thing. On the other hand, I think it sucks that I can't complete quests in their most... in their best... with the best case scenario right at the beginning. But on the other hand, when you explore more, you get more clues and more hints and can use more... Helping your persuasion with Chakect. So, uh, all in all, great game. Um, let's go to the Dendra Ohua. I like my Dendra Ohua. Cannibals! I'm sorry. Look out below! Above! Sideways! A teenage girl lies dead on the slab. Most of her bones are shattered. 
suggesting that she fell from a great height. The corpse of an elderly man lies under the shroud. His face is peaceful and you see no obvious cause of his death. This altar is made entirely of human bones with a carved skeletal head mounted above. Life maggots wriggle in its empty eye sockets. This corpse is in a wretched state, its head and limbs crushed to pulp with bits of wood and debris embedded in the skin. This corpse has been partially eaten, gnawed by human teeth. The body cavity is splayed open and most of the organs are gone. Under the cloth lies the corpse of a man in dirty, mismatched armor. He appears to have been stabbed dozens of times. A plump, middle-aged woman lies upon the slab. Her head has been stripped of flesh, her eyes placed neatly on the slab beside it. The bed of this old pushcart is stained with blood and other more unpleasant things. The bed... oh yes. <laughs> This pushcart holds the emaciated corpse of a pauper. His toes and fingers have been chewed to the bone. Of course. Okay, so... For the nice thumbnail... Kabooch! <laughs> Heavy on the cannibal decoration. <laughs> yes, they... They don't make a secret out of it, do they? Um... This is, this, I, th I don't think any one of you has ever played Planescape Torment, but this pretty much is the style of Planescape Torment. Um, maybe use not bones, but rusty nails, but all in all, this is how the whole game of Planescape Torment looks like. And I feel right at home here. Um, all brown and dirty and spiky. Okay. Devourer of Wrongs. The Devourer of Wrongs seems larger down here than it did in daylight. Its head nearly brushes the roof of the chapel. Well, no. As before, you cannot tell if it is looking at you. It doesn't even seem to be breathing. What is your role in the city's execution again? I eat the dead and learn the details of their crimes through the memories that are bound within their flesh. My mind. Um, Xai. Right. No idea what you're talking about. I don't know no Arya. I don't know any kind of Game of Thrones. I don't play these throny games. Um, yes. Gzai. <laughs> this short, squat woman rakes absently at the swollen red tattoos decorating her pale, naked scalp. Her claws draw blood, but she doesn't seem to notice. Well, claws? Okay. <laughs> her head jerks up at the sound of your footsteps and her too large mouth winds in a sharp-toothed smile. We greet you, tenderling, yes. We honor your arrival. Her eyes rove over your body hungrily. What brings you to the Dendro Hur? Hmm? What do you wish to share with us? Her gray and pointed tongue swipes at the ritual scarring around her lips, leaving a glistening sheet of saliva. Who are you? We are Xai of the... You may not know the word, but we come from another world. A heavier one, more rocks and less life. She wraps her tattoos, drawing your attention to them once more. They are more than decorative. Their shape and placement indicate familial or trivial, uh, tribal ties. Are those clan tattoos or family? Her massive grin nearly splits her face. <laughs> Both? We mark ourselves for each body we consume. Like twigs sprouting from a branch. Everyone in our world is family. Everyone is food. Our world is not like yours. It is not so rich. There are no animals. No. Vegetals. 
None of those. The only flesh is our flesh. But we are blessed. When we eat bodies, nothing is lost except the corpse. The soul is preserved. The dead one becomes part of us. It becomes we. Ah, no, uh, what, ah, have you watched, have you watched a red Game of Thrones, Roxy? I am planning to, uh, not that I, I didn't mean that I don't want to, but I am planning to, um, but I don't know when I will get to that. Maybe after the Dark Tower, after I've read Harry Potter again and the Dark Tower, and there are only, well, I'm half through the Dark Tower. Oh, shit. <laughs> and it took me years to go that far. Um, then I will read Game of Thrones, I think. So please, no, spoil no spoilers, but everything else is fine. Um, you're saying that the individual dies, but the... <laughs> Should we tell her that the word is vegetables or are we asking her this? You're saying that the individual dies but the soul is dispersed among the all who eat the body? Why is it so silent in here? So quiet. There's no music here. Yes, I also think that sometimes people forget all the fun they had watching watching a series, like for example Dexter. I I also didn't understand some things in the last season of Dexter, but I don't think that the ending was too bad. And even so, there were some many many great episodes before that. And on the other hand, some series or of movies or anything. Um, has a great ending but getting there was ugh. for example the fog i think it's called the remake of the fog a bad movie don't watch it but the ending is superb like like any movie of m night Shyamalan, uh sixth sense the village um signs i think all his movies really but the twist ending is always there and it gets you, at least the first few times. Oh, cute. I thought that you also watched the whole series. <laughs> and Shiroxi, yes, I, I know what you mean. What? What's rolling, 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 rolling? Ah! Uh, welcome back, Con Velocity. Um, what's your take on Game of Thrones? I have never watched it, so please no spoilers. I've never read anything of it, but this is the topic that is talked about in here. Um, and yes, Chiroxy. For example, another great series, The Sopranos. Um, in my opinion, had a great ending. Other people thought it was the worst ending for a series. And, but I think I think to a great series, you can only make an ending that either disappoints or um polarizes do you say that in, in english that you you either have, that you have people who love it or hate it or it's just disappoints but i don't think you can make an ending to a great series that everyone loves and and if you can it's very very hard uh I forgot how that actor plays his 17 year old self just adding a baseball cap. Q without E? What? Baseball caps in Game of Thrones? What? Or do you mean um, How I Met Your Mother? But I think in a, in a sitcom it's allowed because it's supposed to be comedy and you know these people are not that young anymore.
good good thing on your watch list, Roxy. I can very much recommend it, but it takes a while until you until you like it. Um, Oh, lost style ending. Oh, please, no. Um, th this, I think, is under the category it disappoints. I don't think anyone was really happy with the lost ending. <laughs> yes, it, it ended before it ended. I agree. Okay, um, you can go talk about series. This is... And 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 welcome. Wouldem lost has no ending. Okay. <laughs> uh, you can say it like that too. I think she meant me. Q without e. So before we all of us get lost in here, uh, thank you, Velocity, for subscribing. I mean. Uh, I, 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 I haven't, I haven't, I haven't mentioned it that much as I would have, should have, could have. What, for two months? So far, you have, yes. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, I spat on my display again. Um, I'm happy you're here. And I, and so far you are the only one that doesn't um, prime subscribe. And that especially gets me... No, Heldred did it also once, although he does have um, Twitch Prime. Um, that that it's even more appreciated and I thank you very much. Um, we are getting old. I don't have even have Prime. Yes, me neither. Um, my dad has and there are ways that we can use it too. And no, totally official ways. Why am I whispering? Okay, so, uh, Gazai, we are, um, Velocity, we are talking here to cannibals that eat people because not only for sustenance, or not really for sustenance, but so they can have their memories and their consciousnesses. So every time they eat someone, they will live in them. They will still live in them, kind of, live through them. <laughs> And so, because no one of you <laughs> yes, cannibals that eat people. <laughs> Different from the other part of uh, types of cannibals. <laughs> That's what schools sound like. Pretty much any high school, I think, yes. And college. Um, you're saying... You are correct. We give our respect in this way and we survive. And so we don't. And sometimes someone dies on their own and the soul is lost. Our people deserve better. That is why we are here. We hear heard rumors of the Dendro who are magic, she says, concentrating. He languages his tenses clearly give her trouble. It does not stop at the soul. It pulls memories from dead flesh and soaks them into the mind. So we come, came through a portal in the bloom to learn this magic. We found our way to Sardis. We asked to join. Now the portal is gone, we hear, but we will make another in time. How many bodies have you eaten? We do not share this. We prefer our feasts to be private, but many Many. We find our feasts on our own. Um, okay, some questions about the Denver Hua. No. No, we are not the voice of the Denver Hua, Tenderling. Speak with our leader in Bitu instead. Savor his words and drink of his thoughts. She gestures extravagantly in the direction of an elderly, an elderly man standing nearby as though introducing a prince. I think this is Imbitu. You don't want to tell me? What? 
We do not speak of want tenderly. We do not deserve to tell you. And we too miss our voice. Um. Okay, farewell. We will miss you tenderly. All of you. Next no. one. Uh, Kiatawa. This woman watches you, measuring every step, every twitch of your hands. And yet there is no fear in her. Iron lines her spine and presses her mouth into a thin, even line. You take a wrong turn, she says, studying the nails on her right hand. Don't see many people down here for the light or the company. She steals a cautious glance at the hulking cultist nearby, then returns her gaze to you. Want something? How long have you been in Dendrahua? Long enough. Thought I found the place I belonged. Guess I was wrong. She falls silent. Her lips shape the word again. Why don't you feel like you belong? I... Never mind. I shouldn't have said anything. What's bothering you? Nothing. No offense, but I don't know you at all. Leave me alone, all right? Okay, okay, okay. Absolutely. Mallet. The burly man sneers at you, flexing massive scarred hands that could easily encircle your throat. His tongue probes his stained, sharpened teeth, and a short, blood-stained club swings from a hook at his waist. So, what are you doing down here, Shulmeet? Laying in the dark? <laughs> Mallet! This numb slab beat. Tell me, Mattas. Ach, he matters to me. Mallet. This numb slab beat his partner to death over two shins. Have you been part of the Dendro Hur for long? No, not long. What did you do before? I broke stuff. And don't think I don't recognize you. Looking over at Tybia, I remember you and what you did. What I did? What I did? Oh, are you talking about how I told everyone you killed your partner for less than the cost of a dinner? I do it again and for free. It doesn't matter. None of that stuff matters anymore. This is my place now. Way I see it is I don't know you. You haven't done anything for me and we got nothing to talk about. Not now, anyway. So why should we? You'll open up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you won't be able to shut me up. Tell me about the letter. Huh? Don't have to tell you anything. <laughs> you ain't one of us. You ain't nobody. He jerks his chin at the elderly man who stands nearby. You want a tour? You talk to him, Bijou. I'm busy. Is he in charge? Yeah. And at his age, he better be. Okay. Farewell. What a nice and cozy living room. It is, isn't it? Um, see you soon, kitty cat. See you back later. And I think it really looks cozy. Um, I mentioned that before, this looks like the whole game Planescape Torment looked like, this is what it looked like. So Numenera has a very different style, more colors, brighter, um, but here I feel right at home. So Imbitu, quick save, and I want a nice thumbnail, so I'll wait and Ah, verdammt. Um, at first glance, it would be easy to assume that this man is dying of some wasting disease or starvation. He's little more than two tall skeletons wrapped in translucent flesh and a tattered rope. His hands are essentially bony claws, and yet he beams at you. His sunken eyes glittering with suppressed laughter and feverish life. Keep your guard up around this one. Bitu is sharp, very sharp. He's eaten a lot of very smart people. 
in which he smiles, his teeth are muddy brown. I know you. So many eyes have lingered on that tattoo, that noble brow. He reaches for your forehead with a shivering skeletal finger. Do you want him to touch our forehead or do we pull away? You decide. Creepy old man. No! <laughs> Shroxy? Cute? Heldrick? No other... This... Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. No touchy-touchy. Then <laughs> I'll do as you ask, Velocity. You step out of his reach, he blinks, then smiles. I'm very sorry. I rarely deal with the living. Corpses are not quite so bashful. He flaps his hand at you. I remember you now, of course. Old Sirisa once saw you out of the corner of her eye a week before his accident. Ulurima sold you a small bag of sugar-dusted almonds. But those aren't the only two, no. You drift through countless lives, altering and ending them, never leaving a name. Oh, I can't stand mysteries. Love them, but can't stand them. Who are you? Um. Um. The changing guard is. Well, the changing guard, and he, we, are a cast of of his. I, I, Velocity. I don't know if you know this. That's why I repeat that. Um. Changing guard, totally powerful, dude who can, who lives on and on and on, and is pretty much immortal by moving his consciousness from one body to the next. And we are one such body. When he leaves a body, the body just falls down and another consciousness, a new consciousness, a soul, gets into that body. But they keep the memories of the changing guard or some of the memories. And so we are not the changing guard, well, but we were at one time the changing guard. Just so you know. So what do we tell him? Are we totally mysterious, stealthy Jack-like? Are we... Plain and simple, or are we a deceitful liar? <sighs> ah. Sorry. We're a mystery. Okay. If Shiroxy or Cutie Cat, uh, Cute Without E, don't have anything against it, we remain a mystery. If you must. He looks disappointed. <coughs> so, what brings you to the chapel of the Dendro Hua? Hmm. Tell me about your cult. We worship the great Queen Salavun, Lady of Maggots, Goddess of Entropy, and Guardian of the Empty Barrier. Although worship is the wrong word, perhaps? He points to the altar nearby. It displays a skull with flat, unforgiving eyes buried in its hollow sockets. She waits on the other side of death with her billions of squirming children. They devour whatever passes into their realm, and rightfully so. Everyone must eat. But whatever she and her children eat is lost forever, and so the Dendro who will work to preserve the minds and the mysteries of mortals before death claims them. We hold their shrill little thoughts in our minds and let them tumble around as they will. It feels marvelous. More questions. Lovely. This may surprise you, but we rarely get curious visitors. Most people seem quite nervous about us. What is your purpose? We preserve the knowledge and memories, even the consciousnesses, of 
Mortals who passed they before they pass into the realm of the great green Sardavun and are lost forever. What does your name mean? The old man's eyes dart from side to side and he leans in. Nobody knows. It's a mystery. Isn't that wonderful? Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, Shiraxi, cute without E, I'm sorry, but I don't know what you mean. What the fuck? Yes, uh, creepy old grandpa in B2 wanted to touch our forehead. That's why she said that. Um, how long have you existed? Centuries, though how many I couldn't say. We aren't devoted to paper records, as you might imagine. We prefer keeping them in our heads. He runs his tongue along the edge of his rotting teeth. Also, and this is slightly embarrassing, none of us managed to eat our founder. He simply disappeared one day, can you imagine? Who founded your cult? A man named Melmoth Levium. I do wish one of us had managed to eat him. Mm. Lovely name, Melmoth Levium. No, I don't agree. How do you preserve humanity's, humanity's knowledge? Oh, I thought everyone knew that. We eat the flesh and organs of corpses to assimilate their minds, then... What? Um... One, two, three, one, two, three. What do you mean? What do you say? What do we... What should we choose? Old Feuerglanze always chooses the knowledge answer, so I would say three, but um, you decide. I always like, I'm most happy when I can talk like a crazy guy. The diplomatic option, all right. Diplomat, Stealthy Jack, coming. Ah, a fellow scholar. Well, it's quite simple and impossibly complex at the same time. He points to the various hoses and chambers adorning his robes. We do not chew on the corpses, of course. That would be quite messy and lethal, most likely. Humans are a diseased bunch. Our suits liquefy dead flesh, extracting the information contained within. When we feed upon this uh, enriched flesh, that becomes part of us. At any rate, we scour the streets for bodies uh, left unclaimed. We bring them here and lay them upon the beers. His sweeping hand directs your attention to the still shrouded figures lying about the chamber. When a body is ripe with unplugged secrets, we gather about it and taste it together. Let a lifetime of thoughts flit around ours like little fish. Mm. One, two, three. <laughs> I would say interesting, I guess. All of this seems unlikely to me at best. I mean, have you been in the ninth world? Everything is unlikely, so why not this? Why shouldn't this be possible? Diplomacy! <laughs> okay, when you all agree, let's choose diplomacy. Oh, no, <laughs> no. The process is quite flawless and works very well. 
He gingerly pats his bony chest. I'm living proof. Let's talk about something else. Oh, very well. Mm. Tell me about yourself. Oh, there isn't much to tell. I spent most of my years in this little chapel. Uh, he casts a fun look around. The uh, dendro who has rather consumed my life. <laughs> if you get my pun. Um, why did you join it? Well, that is a good question. A very good question. I congratulate you on asking it. <clears throat> I am afraid, however, that outsiders rarely understand what calls us to the Dendro Hoor. So, with apologies, I do not think I will answer. I'd still like to know. And I would love to tell you. And it is clear that he would. But it is rather tangled in the mysteries of our order. I simply cannot indulge you. Again, my apologies. Let's talk about something else. A sculptor told me that you or people may have found a man killed by a strange creature. Yes, I believe I know the poor man. <laughs> Dry as a leaf. Hollow as an eggshell, barely any mind left in there at all. And back to at your leisure, he's the one with the charred skin on his brow. I'll remember that. Now, I don't know much more about him, <laughs> but I can assure you we plumbed the depths of his mind and body for answers. But... I seem to recall seeing him before, possibly not through my eyes, mind you, in Cliff's Edge. He was coming out of a building near the chirurgical parlor. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Again, again, again. Something else. Your life. Uh huh. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Farewell. Farewell, take care, take great care. Okay, um, I'm going. This might be the, the body we have to talk to. All right, a strong aroma of charred flesh rises from the dingy, dingy, dingy cloth over this corpse. Lift the shroud, Making a note. you carefully move the shroud to the side, there's no way around it. This dead man was a cast-off, and it would be hard for him to be deader. His flesh is papery, desiccated. His tattoo, or rather the charred remains of it, has burned through his skin and into the bone beneath. And, of course, there's the matter of his charred eye sockets and his horrified, gaping mouth. Parts of the corpse are missing, remnants of an aborted dendra feast. You aren't surprised they stopped. Examine it again. Touch the ta- oh. Do you know um, this one show, this where whoa, a woman with the nastiest, shittiest English accent, she, not that she imitates it badly, but it's just, I should talk like that, a guy got uh, drawn to the audience of the castle tower. That's how she talks like. And um, you don't understand anything. And she's so, bah! But oh, what is the show called again? Ink, ink, and well, the 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 what they do in the show is this: they get two people, and they each decide what tattoo tall the other person gets, mostly out of revenge. And I never get why. Why would you? Let someone who's mad at you choose a tattoo for you and do the same to the person. It's just petty. And I don't know how the shot is called right now, but it's um, 
<lacht> Scottish. Äh, <lacht> time for a snack. Äh, we are not a dendro horse, so <lacht> maybe later. And it sounds very Scottish to me. Nee, no, 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 it's not Scottish. It's maybe some kind of cockney. I don't know what. <laughs> I like Scottish too. And Scottish, this, she doesn't sound Scottish. Um, more like a, a cockney Barbie, I would say. Uh, let's touch the towel. The last thing you remember before your fingertip gazes, grazes the tattoo is a rising bus. Time stutters and breaks. Panting softly, you awaken, leaning against the beer for support. Your arm burns, your temples throb in white static claws at the corners of your vision. Someone was screaming in that lightless, timeless void. Remember that much. But it wasn't you. None of the dendra are looking your way. Examine it again. Leave the corpse alone. Okay. Leave the corpse alone. Why don't you know anything about him? <laughs> ah, yes. Nice guy. Uh, I don't think they Absolutely. we can do anything else here. Have you talked to Kiatawa? Okay. Gazai. Mm -hmm. Okay. Devour of wrongs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. This was the Dendra right. Uhur Chapel. Now, we know that the guy who was eaten there talked to the guy in the chai to the the one here journal remember him cute without the e the one who who's nothing but honest and can put implants into our body yes now yes now we will get back to them later first i want to um get to know more of the the cast off that we knew because then we can tell this to the changing guard cultists and then then we get into their um fraction affection and then we can sleep there for free On it. and you know cure without eat that i very much want not to pay any shins hey jerno You're back, he says, spreading his arms as if to hug you. Can I interest you in any one, any of my vastly overpriced items and services? Hey. I thought I can ask him about the person. Hmm. Okay, farewell. I won't miss you, but I'll miss your money. Then let's go to Circus Minor. Um, maybe touching the tattoo, the tall, uh, was enough for us to get to know him. <laughs> I couldn't have. I couldn't have said it better. Cute without E. Where's that dude? Yes, Zofi the Sculptor. There he is. This here is... And these are all the monster that hunts us, by the way. The Sorrow. Um, she... The Sorrow wants to kill all of the castoffs. Mm, Zofi! What do you say? What do you say? Sorrow's prey. Sophie is going to have it. 
Ah, House in Cliff's Edge. Ah, his house was near the Chayachika Parlor, and I thought he was at the Chayachika Parlor. Aha, aha, aha. Aha. Ah, yes, and these are the negotiations with the sticker. But we won't steal their eggs. We are nice. We are Stealth Jack who breathes shadow. A nice Jack. Uh, Cliff's Edge. Let's go back to Cliff's Edge. Let's get back to Cliff's Edge. And while we do that, I will... Hey, they move in the background. Although I have it minimized. That's fun to watch. Um, tattoo show MTV. Just Tattoo of Us. That's the show. So if you ever want to... I will show you now. There, there must be, there must be some audio. Um, season one. There, all of the episodes are, are here on MTV.de. Episode one. Oh fuck! You can you can really watch it online. Oh. In dieser Sendung wird viel gefragt Ach, und die Zuschauer könnten einige Szenen anstößig finden. Stell dir vor, du darfst ein Tattoo für jemanden aussuchen. Oh, der Hammer! Und deine Fantasie... Okay. It's not in English here. So we can't listen to her beautiful voice. Charlotte. Her name is Charlotte. Charlotte Tattoo. Um, oh, I want to show show you. I want to show you. Uh, are we already? Yes, we are in Cliff's Edge. I know where the house is. This is here. Uh, what's her name? Not good Charlotte. Ah, ah. Yes, I accept. Blah, blah, blah. Charlotte. Charlotte Crosby. Okay. And she is born in Sunderland, Tyne and Ware. In North, 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 North England. Okay. And Charlotte Crosby. I will show you how she talks. Uh, I don't know. Maybe this year. Kann ich auf Schwangerschaftsfrühtests vertrauen? Mit dem... Ähm... Um, while we let that load in the background... No. I... save. Hi everyone. So I am in a very exciting place. I don't know why. Please make that noise the alarm. But this is... The new warehouse. outside away from everyone keeping distance um just had to open up for them really i'll probably leave them to it now and then just lock back off yes you have to watch just the two of us to really listen to her at her worst <laughs> um not mtv germany This program contains swearing, scenes of mild pain, and some very extreme tattoos. Ah, I hate it when she says tattoos. <laughs> and that, that was enough. That was the perfect example of what I hate about her accent. This program contains swearing, scenes of mild pain, and some very extreme tattoos. And her voice also maybe isn't a great asset to her. <laughs> oh, I I hate I hate both. I like a nice British accent. No no problem there. 
but I hate her voice and I hate how she pronounces the word Tunnel. Bah! Okay. <laughs> Liverpool Hillbilly. That's what I would have called it too. Yes, I don't know, but... But uh, somehow this must be almost Scottish because it's North, 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 North England. And isn't Liverpool further in the South? I have no idea where Liverpool is. Somewhere in England. Um, good. So now that we've done that, let's see what this guy does. Oh, uh, what, what's his home? What, what is in his home? The salty air only partially mutes the cloud of putrid sweetness clinging to this jumble of fallen wood, stone and iron. Until recently, this was someone's home, but the unstable ground must have caused it to collapse. Search the rubble for clues. You shift aside broken pieces of furniture and small pieces of rubble, but you find nothing of value. After a short while, you realize what has happened. Someone has already picked through the ruins and taken the most accessible valuables. You stand back, concentrating. Nothing about the pile of stone is familiar, but the view from where the door once stood, a boundless horizon falling into the sea, is... Making a note. This appears to be the house where the cast of once lived, but either he left no clues of his identity or they were taken by the scavengers. It might be helpful to ask around the area and see if anyone spotted someone looting this house. Anything else of interest? You rummage through the dusty piles of stone and wood, Looking for anything interesting, but no. These runes appear to have been picked clean. Study the the horizon. Yes. Uh, 90%, that's okay. Fingers of wind to rake at your face. You squint into the sunlight, trying to remember you've stood here before. You know you have, letting your thoughts untangle. The skyline tilts and you stagger as the memory engulfs you. You grip the edge of the crude banister, grimacing at the sea. The calm of the sea no longer touches you as it once did, nor, you realize, does this body. You smile at your own impatience. Your restlessness must rival the ocean itself. I'll remember that. A gust of salty air bears the memory away in ribbons, leaving your mind aching and dry, atop the ruins of the house. There's little doubt now. The changing guard and the cast of killed by the sorrow once lived here. The Kentucky of the UK, so already hillbilly. I I don't know, I don't know, I know isn't I know where Ireland is <laughs> next to England. But I don't know anything else about the British Isles. I don't know, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, yeah yeah yeah, but I don't know I can't place the cities. I know the County Cork of Ireland is in the southwest. Yes. That, that's what I know. Anything else of interest? Nothing else. Dig through the pile to find the source of the stench. Artis, that's what you're here for. No success! But we need to rest. Keep digging! Artis! Now! Uh, fuck the last point of might. Lift with your knees. The small a uh, smell intensifies as you have a s heave aside a slab of ceiling. A swarm of startled insects spin away into the sky, revealing the body of a young woman, torn and crushed. An invisible hand rips the air from your chest and the strength from your legs. You fall, feeling a presence close around you, a heat on your back. What? What do we say? What do we do? People? <laughs> I don't know what to do. I know how you feel, cute without E, and this is the last thing we do anyway today on today's stream. Um, I'm, I have already overtogen with seven minutes, so um, not that much will happen anymore. We will try to find... No, after this we will stop anyway. So bye bye, cute without E. <laughs> Diplomacy isn't on Vogue anymore. Okay, get your breath back. 
You take slow, steady breaths, feeling the heat rising up your back like a hungry bonfire. bonfire. Suddenly, a cool hand covers your burning eyes. A smooth arm folds over your stomach. What? I'll remember that. And just like that, the heat is gone. You whirl around. No one is there, but you sense something has changed in the labyrinth. Labyrinth is the place in our mind where, that we can visit when we sleep. A new reflection is forming in the labyrinth. Yes. Okay. Walk away. Um... I mean, they are right next to it, so maybe they have seen something. Mm -hmm. Who lived in that ruined house against the cliff? The cultist glances at the others. They shake their heads. A man, but we don't know his name or where he is now. He always took great care to avoid us. Did you see who looted it? Yes. A mischievous expression crosses her face. But I wonder if I can convince you to share something with, her, with us in exchange for our help. She ignores the startled looks from her fellow cultists. <gasps> Will you tell us about your birth? <laughs> My time is more valuable than yours? No. We are not an asshole, we are Stealthy Jack. Uh, let's tell the truth, should we? I do what you say, but I'm all for the truth. <laughs> okay, truth it is. Thank you, Velocity. Even though that's a funny answer, but still, the truth. <laughs> you can't be serious. It's true. It's true. Amazing. None of you were lucky enough to wake up in bed, were you? <clears throat> well, a deal's a deal. I'll remember that. We did see someone looking around the rubble before you arrived. She glances as uh, she glancing toward the pile of rubble. Dirty children, orphans perhaps, were digging through the ruins. I believe they took some food and valuables, but we were trying not to stare. Good day to you. Uh, and I know exactly who she's talking about. A boot. Well, there they are. Ba -da -ba -bum. And we will talk to these orphany orphans next time. Next Sunday at 10 a.m. on this channel. Fireglatzer Gaming. Good day to you, sirs and ma'ams. And everything in between. Everyone. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let's save. Um. <laughs> I know. Um. Offense. No. Cast off. Yeah, maybe. Okie dokie. Wednesday. We will play the last time. I guess. And I, I think we will finish the game. Shantae 2. Risky's Revenge Director's Cut. Originally on the Nintendo DS. We played on the PC. And in German, and also in German, the day after that, on Thursday, we will play Gothic 2 Die Nacht des Raben. We are still in Jakenda there, and I don't, I think we will still be several streams in Jakenda, but back to Gothic 2. After our long Gothic 2 break, we'll get back to Gothic 2 on this Thursday, like the Wednesday at 7 p.m. until 10. Mm. PM, I'm sorry. Um, uh, um, sorry, I have to eat and drink more coffee now. You have a wonderful Sunday too, Velocity. Thank you again for subscribing. And thank you anyone else who was watching, who is watching, who will be watching. Um, I'll be watching you. No, oh, that was creepy. Um, bye bye, Cute Without E. Bye bye, Shiroxi. Bye bye, Heldrick. Bye bye, Cutie Cat Sitsi. And I think that was is everyone that has ever been in the chat. Um, have a great Sunday. Peace and long life.